Sequels are like the little brother equivalent to a video game. They can either stay hidden in the shadows, never amounting up to what made the original so good in the first place, or they grow up to be so much better than the original that one day you go from being mom's favorite hardworking son to why can't you get a stable job at 401k like your brother, he's moving up. Basically, when it comes to sequels, most devs will either do better or worse than the original. Finding that fine line between capturing the charm of the original game and improving upon it has proved to be a challenge for a lot of devs. So today we're going to look at Tori 2 and see what it accomplishes. This time around when we start the game, we're treated with a short little intro depicting what starts off our adventure. Once again, it, no not that it, this it, has stolen Tori's ice cream once again. He hops through a portal and proceeds to kickstart our adventure to get it back. After that, we're greeted with the start screen, and boy is this game brimming with charm from the get go. I mean, take a listen to the title screen music from Red Panda Music. After that, we're greeted with some familiar faces. Obviously, we start with Tori, but it seems MacBat and Tasty make a return as unlockable characters, with the secret new fourth character. The level select screen carries the same vibe as the original, but has a slightly better aesthetic in my opinion, as I like the preview of the stage rather than the generic models used in the first game. This time around, we still have 9 stages like before, with the first 4 being normal stages, and the next 4 being remixed versions, and the last one being the final stage. And can I just say how much I am a sucker when it comes to alliteration with level names? I mean, look at these. This really gives me Sonic CD vibes. And I mean STRONG CD vibes. No. Stage 1 takes us to Hidden Headquarters, and typical of any hidden base, we have automatic machinery, plenty of conveyor belts dragging us, and cold metal floors. New to Tori 2 is these boost gates and dash rings. Going through the gate will get you to max speed and stay at it until you slow down. The rings, as expected, launch you into the direction they point. After a few more jumps in the final boost gate, we break through the final door nostalgia critic style and reach the goal. Overall, I like the first stage. It definitely has a nice secret base feel to it. My only criticism would be to beef up the security, maybe add more robots or some spotlights to make it feel like you're really infiltrating a base. Otherwise, a really strong start for this game. Stage 2 takes us to Palm Tree Paradise. No, stop that! To start off, this stage is beautiful! The environment, the water, and listen to that music, it's so fitting. It really comes together to be one of the best looking stages so far, and for good reason. Mama Squid is back and vibing, look at her! After bouncing on a few chairs, we've made it to the end of this stage. Overall, I really like this beach stage. You know, the water looks really good, the overall aesthetics kind of remind me of Sonic Adventure a little bit, and it's just a really nice relaxing place. Stage 3 takes us to Lunar Lasers. A space armada fills the sky as little Tori makes his way through tons of boost gates and dash rings, giving us room to keep our speed up. Just beware of the big gaps, and once you get the hang of how you can carry the boost momentum, it's actually a blast to just fly through this stage. This level almost reminds me of Sonic here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just can't stop making connections to this. Either way, after a few more dash panels and jumps, we've made it to the end of this stage. Hot stepping it into stage 4, we arrive in Pyro Palace. The first thing I'd like to point out is the little hat Tori is wearing. Looking good there, partner. I'm gonna be honest, the first time I entered this level, I thought I was in the nether from Minecraft, and I'm really sorry because I can't unsee it. This stage contains no enemies whatsoever. The only challenge here is navigating narrow platforms with lava shooting out, spinning platforms, and the occasional crumbling platform or two. However, you see that ominous looking purple thing back there? Why is it just glaring at us? I guess we'll find out in a later stage. Now that we've finished the first four stages, we can move on to the second half, which is basically remix stages with harder layouts. Blasting into stage 5 Sky Station, we start off hitting max speed, 
and I hope you've mastered the boost gates and dash rings because there are plenty of ways to go fast here. While playing the level, things were going smoothly until I noticed a new collectible. The CD! My brawl instincts kicked in immediately, dropping all other priorities, and after nabbing it, I had to wonder, what are these for? A possible sound test? Well, we'll find out more about that later. Taking a dive into Stage 6, Sparkle Park, we get to start off with some water slide fun. This level is much more open than its predecessor, and one of my favorite moments is being dropped off in the pool where you get to see the bees riding in on the ducks. It's honestly really adorable. Going further in the stage, everything looks good until we hit... This. What the heck is that, and why is it staring at me? <laughs> it actually jump scared me on my first playthrough. At this point, I'm expecting it to ask me, Do you got games on your phone? And the music is a nice change of pace on this stage. There's even lyrics in the song, too. Finishing off the stage, we're good for large water slide to the finish. Overall, I really liked how this stage was. It was really well crafted and really fun in my opinion. A solid 10 out of 10 for me. Blasting away to stage 7, we're back in space with Dash Dimension. And it certainly lives up to its name because there are dash pads, boosters, and blasters everywhere. This is a fun level to speedrun because if you can keep your momentum, you can essentially keep the speed boost for almost the entire level. And you know it's really well designed because I kept going back to the stage over and over just trying to get that perfect run. Stage 8 brings us to the fiery depths of Torch Tower. And a tower indeed it is. At first I was wondering what the gimmick of this stage was, and once I started climbing up, uh, it quickly became apparent. That thing from earlier is after us! You know what it reminds me of? It was an Alaskan forward! So the only priority in this level is making it to the top before that thing gets you. Now, before we get into the final stage and the completion bonus, I got to hold a mini interview with Marcus via the DMs, asking him a few insightful questions about the game and its development. So for my first question, after you made Tori 3D, did you have any plans to make a Tori 2 beforehand? Or was it all based on the positive response from the internet? I did have plans already. Smiley face. I wanted to have a more water focused level in the first game, but didn't really know how to do it without boring water physics. When people actually enjoyed the first game, I was already at work on something else but decided to make a second Tori first, because I still had ideas I wanted to try out. What was the inspiration for the new stage locations? Were they themes left over from the first game or new ideas you happened to just think about? Partially, I wanted to have a space stage, and like I said, water stage, in the first one, but for one reason or another, didn't actually make them. In terms of inspiration for the levels, a lot of Kirby, Sonic, Dragon Ball, and other animes, I think. Was there anything you got to add in Tori 2 that you originally could not in Tori 3D, like level gimmicks or secrets? Yes, the space and water stages, bouncy pads, and a more defined booster gimmick. Was it easier or harder to develop Tori 2? At first it was easier, because the main design and many code related things were already done thanks to Tori 3D so I could focus more on the levels and how they look and feel. That ultimately made it way harder though, because I was very focused on them and super unhappy most of the time. Are there any details in the game you would like to point out that the average player might miss? There might be a tiny bit more the whole behind the game idea this time, but it is more hidden. Besides that, I would like to point out that I am somehow really happy with the colors of the cover art, so I hope some people will enjoy the look of the game. Smiley face. Now, what's up with the whole black ominous figure in Sparkle Park, or that purple thing in Torch Tower, and the person shaking his head in, in its home? Are they there to scare the player, or are they a reference to something else? Answering that might spoil some of the behind the game part I was talking about. Sorry. Though I like to say, none of them were just random additions. Neither were the stars in part 1. Now, what are your plans for Tori in the future, or will you be focusing on new games or doing more with MacBad and Tasty Rom in your other games? I really, really need and want to finish Tasty, though I am currently working on something else. Tori 2 was the third really and bright colorful game in a row now. I have been working with a lot of pinks since December 2019. So for now, I need a bit of a different color palette, 
though I hope some people will enjoy the thing I am making right now. I do have plans for Tori though. Tori 2 was a direct sequel to Tori 3D because I felt it would fit really well. If there is going to be a third one though, I have some ideas to change it up a bit and maybe actually make it a bit bigger this time. And there you have it! A lot of thought, love, and effort really went into making this game, and Marcus clearly knows his stuff. With that, let's look at the final stage, its world. This time around, the stage has no collectibles or enemies of any type. It's actually kind of peaceful as the rose petal fill sky sets the mood. And what's over there? It's Tori's ice cream! Huh? A fake? Are you kidding me? Alright. Later in the stage, you notice some cameos from Tori 3D. That over there, and... Hey! Is that... Huh. Neat. Now right before we end the final stage, I do want to give a heads up for spoilers, so please go to this timestamp on screen if you want to experience the end of the game for yourself. Right when we think we're at the end of the stage, suddenly, IT attacks us in a final boss fight. Considering how Tori 3D just ended abruptly, I was surprised to see this. It has a few orbs that will fly around and attempt to attack you. After the orbs fall down and you ram them back into his face a few times, we finally take down IT and we beat the game. However, once we beat the game, we're treated to a cutscene showing what happened afterwards. Tori, after winning back his ice cream, notices it is lonely and sad. And like a Chad, he decides to share his ice cream even though they tried to destroy us several times over. <laughs> now that the spoilers are all over, let's talk about the bonus unlockable content. Like last time, once we obtain all the A ranks in a stage, we unlock Tasty! And with the power of ramen, we can zoom across all the previous stages. It's actually really fun to blast through these stages with them, as it shows how you could actually speed run this game in a whole nother level. Let's go! Ah! The next unlockable character is Macbat. Featuring endless jumps, he can basically fly just about anywhere. However, instead of his flying being pointless, you can use him for exploration. Remember those CDs I mentioned earlier? Well, a majority of them are in locations only MacBat can reach. So, with some exploring, you'll find them all around these different stages, and you'll unlock a brand new hidden character. So again, if you want to see the brand new hidden character, you can keep watching, or if you want to avoid spoilers, just click the timestamp over here. Well, after collecting all the hidden CDs in each stage, you get Glitchy! And wow, what a completion bonus it is. If I'm correct, Glitchy is even faster than everyone else. The only downside is how they have infinite jumps, and I know they can fly, but in my opinion, I feel like a good triple jump would be better than finding a straight line and endlessly jumping to the finish. Regardless, it was still an amazing addition for this game. And with the spoilers out of the way, that covers all of Tori 2 an amazing sequel to an already solid game. While it doesn't do anything groundbreaking like reinvent the 3D platformer, what it does is do bring us a solidly designed bite-sized experience I think everyone should experience at least once. The game is literally only a dollar, and you can 100% this game in under an hour, so you won't break the bank or worry about it not being able to finish it. Once again, I'd like to thank Marcus for providing me an early copy of the game, and you amazing people for watching. See you next time.